It means rheumatism in various parts of the joints, which was acute. And wanted to give me some very nasty drugs. Um, and even though I was only 18 going 19, I still wanted to know what the side effects were, etc. And the drugs seemed to be as bad as the disease and without any, it was to control the condition. And um, it, it was at that point I was getting a bit desperate where a Burmese family, uh, they're friends of the monastery, decided to take me in hand and took me to an acupuncture center. I didn't know what acupuncture was. And that's when I started getting acupuncture treatment, changing my diet, uh, taking herbs, and um, the condition cleared. But how did you know to change your diet? Because you were, you were very young and there wasn't so much information around in those days. Oh, the, the, the acupuncturist was the source of information. Okay. Uh, was the source so of information, he was the, yes. the guiding factor there. Yeah. Okay. He was looking at my diet, what could be aggravating. Right. And the fact that I I'd had allergies before, that it could be an autoimmune condition. So he was ahead of his time in a way, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he was, uh, he was uh, very inspirational, just as my meditation teachers had been inspirational. But it's at that point I realized this was my next path. That being, being in the monastery, meditating, becoming enlightened maybe, um, was now less important. It was more important, now I'd recovered, to actually move on into the, um, the art of healing. So getting sick actually did you a big favor? It's that... what the Buddhists call a heavenly messenger. Right, yeah. Basically. It's only a heavenly messenger if you listen to the message yes. and understand and move on in the direction that it's pointing. It becomes a hellish messenger if you resist yes. and try to run away from it. Yeah. Because it's not much fun, I would guess, being enlightened with a body that, that's pretty no. malfunctioning. Well, I had visions of being... Uh, some days I was hobbling around on sticks, some days I wouldn't even be able to get up. Yeah. It was so painful and wow. swollen joints. Yeah. So, you know, and, and some years later I actually treated a young man, he was about the same age as me actually, I actually treated a man who had a similar history and had actually had disjointed joints. By the time he came to see me, his knees and his elbows had been quite uh, distorted and he could yeah. only bend them so far and he was semi-disabled. So, and he'd actually gone down the, um, another route. He hadn't actually gone into the route that I had and um, had been, as I say, semi-crippled. So it was too yeah. late, in a sense, to help him. Control his condition, make him feel better, but not revert the condition. In my case, the condition was reverted and never came back. So, And how did you decide to learn about the uh, acupuncture and Chinese herbs? What was your medium for information there? Oh, well, it's straight off to college. You went yeah. off to college, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So you, yeah. le you left the monastery or you went... Yep. Yeah, I resigned from the monastery, even okay. though they said, no, you've got to do five years. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I did sort of almost two years. But they said, you've got to do five years, and then you can... But they weren't ordering me, they were just suggesting. Yeah. But I thought, no, no, this is obvious. And, and Was that the place you told me about once where you could only eat when the, uh, the chief of the monastery started eating, and if he didn't actually eat anything, you all had to leave your food? Was that <laughs> that place? Or? Yes, uh, it's, it's a tradition that uh, when, when you're a novice monk, you always sit at the end of the line, all the little novices are at the end, and then the more senior the monks to the top monk, who's the most senior, sits at the top of the line, and you only eat once a day, and you only eat. You Which have a. Isn't very good for the body, is it? No, no. probably another reason why yeah. you do it, yeah. especially with, with with hard physical work, and then sitting out in the woods at night time. You know, it's quite a quite. <sighs> no a wonder you got to. <laughs> and you, you you basically have a what's called a begging bowl, a round bowl, and supporters of the monastery come along and chuck food in the bowl, or not. And so you eat what you're given, uh, or, or not at all, because the, you wouldn't eat until the senior monk started eating. And the senior monk might sometimes just stare at his bowl and then decide not to eat and get up and walk away. And you've got a whole day then without food at all? Yeah, another 24 hours, yeah. 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 But, you know, the body can do that. I mean, fast in the wild, animals do fast. I mean, yeah. I always say to people, always be a bit hungry, because if you're a bit hungry, you're just much more sharp. Just a bit, not, not yeah. very hungry, but just a bit. Don't stuff yourself, because then you make yourself, your senses dull. Yeah. So anyway, you, you were saying you left the monastery and you went to college. Went to college. And that was the start of a new adventure of learning the theory or the practice of... of did you start both with the herbs and acupuncture, or just the acupuncture to it's start a, with? It was an acupuncture college. Yeah. Um, but um, into my uh, second term, I sort of realized that I needed to go east first to get some more cultural references. 
to get some more of a background. So I actually left the college and for a year went to Southeast Asia and um, I was there. Right. Um, partly sort of living in the cities and partly studying again in different meditation monasteries with different teachers who had different takes on what enlightenment is or was. Um, and then came back and re-entered and finished the full course right. in Chinese herbal medicine and herbal, yeah, Chinese herbal medicine and acupuncture. And then off to China to work in various hospitals. You say that in a very kind of casual way, but that's actually quite a big step to go to China, mm. especially when it was, I guess it was 20, 30 years ago, and work in different hospitals. That must have been a pretty fascinating experience because it's a completely different culture, obviously, language and a completely different way of working too. Well, by the time I'd, I'd gone to China, I'd already spent time in India and Thailand and Burma and Malaysia, etc. So by the time I got to China, I, didn't, it, I wasn't phased. I did take, I, I mean, I used to take students to China to do um, further training in acupuncture and herbs in China and for those who hadn't been to China or had, hadn't particularly traveled in so-called third world countries very much, they'd be, they're, they're, I'd be blinking for a while. They'd be stunned and think, oh, look at that and oh, like that. And you'd go, what? It's just normal. Well, <laughs> so, let's just take it. So let's say in this country, if there's a road accident, you knocked mm, off your motorbike mm, and then you have a mm -hmm. motorbike or you fall down and break your leg, you get mm -hmm. taken to the hospital and you, mm -hmm. you get given painkillers mm -hmm. and then if necessary, they'll stitch you up and do operations mm. or whatever. Now, what, how would a similar situation be in China if you say you, you, you fall off your motorbike mm -hmm. and break a leg or whatever? Mm -hmm. Same. Because in China, the system there um, is far more open. They use what works. They, right. haven't, they haven't got time. They don't have the resources to, to argue about, you shouldn't use this, this is the only medicine. They use what has been proven. Um, obviously, Chinese medicine's been in China for over four and a half thousand years, so they know it works. Uh, but they know Western medicine for the accidents that you've just mentioned is the, is the most effective approach. Okay. So, yeah. uh, you, you have an accident, you break your leg, you want to go to hospital, you want to have Western medicine to deal with the acute condition. Then afterwards, that's the time to have acupuncture and herbs to speed up the healing and improve the healing. Right. So the, the two work together. And Western medicine is, is, excels in dealing with emergency and acute situations. You wouldn't want any other system, quite frankly. However, after the acute phase is finished, then there's a gap. And that gap is beautifully filled with something like Chinese herbs and acupuncture that does the other part of the process. And people are open to that there. Everybody is okay with that. It's normal. It's natural. Right. Yeah. 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 And if somebody comes in with a heart condition or cancer or, mm -hmm. or whatever, or mm. virus that's very serious. How, how is that basically dealt with in a Chinese hospital? That's de dealt with in the fact that when the person comes in, they'll assess what type of medicines. Maybe they'll just have a Western medicine. Uh, maybe they, uh, they feel that that's not appropriate. They'll re then refer them to the herb department and they'll have herbal medicine. Often as not, they'll have both Western complemented uh, with Chinese herbal medicine and acupuncture. So it's, as I say, it's an open system there. They actually assess what the patient needs. And um, usually they will have a combination of different... For instance, in something like cancer, they use chemotherapy and radiotherapy in China and have done for a long time, um, since the um, early 50s. But when they use, for instance, chemotherapy, they combine it often with Chinese herbal medicine so they can reduce the dose 